Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. This is the place where we take a no bullshit look at life's little lessons. Here, together, we find the spiritual glory in even the most wicked hard story. This is a journey from fear back to love and how we can find our greatest strength and happiness in some of the most unlikely places. I believe that if you're willing to change your mind, you can totally change your life. So, are you ready to rewrite your story and choose to live free? Let's do this. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? Do you guys want to know a little something? This is the 100th episode. One zero zero, you guys. I'm so jazzed. Totally did it. Yes. I'm so excited. I mean, I'm excited pretty much anytime I do a podcast, but I want a little pat on the back, a little pat on the back for KK that a hundred episodes straight have not missed one plan to continue doing them to a hundred more. Who knows how many more? I don't know. Maybe probably as long as I have a voice and I'm alive and breathing and there's a mic, I'll probably keep doing these. <laughs> we'll see. But you guys, thank you so much for listening. For those of you who watch the show on YouTube, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of the Karen Kenny Show family. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And uh, since, since I'm celebrating, I'm celebrating not only just the fact that we um, you know, have hit 100 episodes, which, which by and large in itself is wicked exciting, but I'm also excited to have just wrapped up that launch for The Nest, my spiritual membership uh, and community. That was amazing. I, like that, I'm gonna do a whole other episode on that, but I also wanted to say thank you to the folks who are on my email list who supported me. And of course, all the new Nesties that signed up. It's just so incredible and so great. But I wanna know something else I'm celebrating. You guys, I'm, here's, here's, a little, here's a little title to tell you what we're about to talk about, and then I'll tell you why I'm celebrating it. So what we're talking about today is called the four finger mug. <laughs> the four finger mug. You might be like, KK, what the hell is a four finger mug? Like, what are you talking about? First of all, I'm going to show you what the hell a four finger mug is. So those of you who only listen to the show, you're not going to get the benefit of seeing this, but I will describe it. And then I'll tell you where that came from. And then I'll tell you the story and why I'm celebrating. Okay. This is a four finger mug. I'm holding up a mug right now, you guys. It's a, it's a tea mug, a coffee mug, whatever you want to call it. I don't drink coffee. Just whatever's in it. It's a, it's a, it's a beverage refreshment container. <laughs> so it's like a coffee mug. See how all of my four fingers can go through the hole? That is a four finger mug. Now, let me tell you about this. So one day my friend Richie and I were talking and we were talking about, I don't know, Richie's the kind of guy is really creative, just wicked smart, really creative. So funny. He's also a fellow musician, good friend of my sweeties. Uh, I've known Richie for like, oh my God, like 20 years. And one day we get to talking and he's like, I don't know. Like we, I don't know if we were having something with, with tea or something in the mugs. That is how, I don't know how it came about, but we both agreed that we just cannot deal with a three finger mug. We're like, no, 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 no. It's gotta be a four finger mug. If I can't put all four fingers through the thing, like not actually, you know what else is great about a four finger mug? Let me show you. Four finger mugs, you can usually get most of your hand in it. Like you can wrap your hand, see the four finger all the way around. It's so comforting and soothing. Three finger mugs, what do you do with the pinky? Like, what do you do with it? I don't even know. So we were just talking about how we both prefer four finger mugs. All right. Fast forward to the other day. I go into Target. Okay. I go into Target and I see this mug. I have a bunch of mugs. I don't even drink coffee. I drink tea like once a day, if that, right? So, but I have mugs because I, I like mugs that are like, um, you know, friends, friends send me mugs with swears on them. <laughs> this is actually a Course in Miracles mug, right? The prayer that you guys always hear me saying, uh, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? Um, but a lot of my mugs have like swear words on them, which is wicked funny. 
But I was in Target the other day. Here's the thing. You know how Target is. I don't need a mug. But I saw the mugs. I was walking by the mugs on the way to the back of the store. And I saw this peacock mug. And I was like, oh. And it was a big, fat mug, right? I was like, oh, I can get a lot of stuff in there. And I was like, and there's a peacock on it. And as I start to walk, I caught, it caught me out of the corner of my eye, right? And I got like kind of jazzed about it. But as I got closer to the mug, I'm like, oh, it's a three finger mug. And then I start to have the battle in my mind. Yeah, but it's got a peacock on it, but it's a three finger mug. Yeah, but did you see the circumference of that mug, KK? It's got like a lot of space. It, you, you, you could have a good, like twice as much tea in there. And here's the other thing with tea. Don't fool yourself. I'm not one of those fancy tea people. <laughs> There's only like three teas that I like, and they got to have, so peppermint tea and ginger tea, mostly tummy teas, but they got to have sugar in them or I won't drink them. And then there's chai tea, decaffeinated. You do not want KK on caffeine, and it's also not so soothing for my tummy. Um, so we also have uh, chai tea, but also it's got to have like vegan almond vanilla uh, milk in it or I won't drink it, right? It's, uh, if it's not sweet, I don't want it. Let me put it that way <laughs> when it comes to tea. So I'm not, some people will be like, ooh, green tea, uh, ooh, long tea. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. So anyways, back and forth in my head over the mug. And at the last minute, I had to draw, I had to draw a line with myself and I had to say, here's the thing with this mug. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's tell the truth. You like how it looks, but you will never use it. And you know you'll never use it because it's not a four finger mug. So you're going to spend whatever it was, the three bucks, four bucks to get the mug and it will sit on the shelf and you will never reach for it. You will never go for it because it's not a four finger mug. And we're no longer doing, I'm giving you a little insight, you guys. I'm giving you a little insight into how my mind works, right? And, and then I hear, hear my, myself say to myself, we're not doing that anymore. And I'm like, oh, woo, that's right. So now let me tell you another story and I'm gonna connect this all for you. We're not doing that anymore. And I was like, damn right, we're not doing that anymore. And what I mean by that, is this. So if you're on my email list, and if you're not on my email list, if you listen to the podcast, but you aren't on my email list, let's correct that right now. Let's change that right now, right? Just go to karenkenny.com, K-E-N-N-E-Y, right? karenkenny.com backslash sign up. And uh, get on the email list because a couple of good reasons, right? If you like the storytelling and the stuff that I talk about on this show, you get emails on Sunday nights like about this kind of stuff. And on Thursdays, you will get the podcast delivered right into your inbox. So it's like wicked cool and easy. Um, but so here's the thing. So if you've been getting my Sunday emails, you heard me tell this story about, well, I wouldn't say, you read, you read me telling, right? You read the story of how like all of a sudden I woke up and my spiritual team was like, we are moving furniture around today. So something possessed me at the end of 2021 where I was like, yeah, we're going to change some things around here anymore. So I had this, it started off as one little project and then it just like snowballed. Now, now double amen hands, if you can appreciate what I'm about to say. So stay with me for a little bit. So um, it all kind of goes back. It all kind of go, well, let, let me start here. Okay, so I was looking around my house. Now we have six animals and because we have six animals, we have four dogs, a cat and a bunny. The bunny has to have her own room. So she's kind of like in her own room and there's like what's called an X pen. So she's got this little pen. She's got a whole room to herself, but the opening to the room just has a little X pen in front of it so that you know the dogs can't get in and scare her and she can't get out, but everybody can see everybody and sniff each other and all that, right? Um, and then you have Toby Pajamas, the cat. And I don't know about your dogs, but our dogs love to eat poop out of the litter box. So then his area where we put his food and whatever has been, it's just been like our house has been a series of baby gates for 14 years. It's just been crazy. And it just stopped working for me the way that it was set up. So I woke up one morning and spiritual team was like, we're changing this. 
So not only did I, I was like, we are not doing this anymore, right? And, and I'm going to get to what the this really is though, right? Right now on the surface, it just sounds like, oh, I was moving some stuff around. But what happened is I ended up going through the house. We moved the gates around. We changed everything so that the flow of energy and just the flow of me being able to get where I wanted to get, the animals having just even more space to kind of interact in our world and stuff like that. Because we have one dog that pees on things. We have one that like, it's just like, it's insane. Okay. So as I'm kind of doing like that figuring out of like how I'm going to rearrange things. And trust me, it's all connected to a four finger mug. Stay with me. As I'm trying to figure out where everything's going to go, I start to notice all these other things. And I'm like, yeah, by the way, I fucking hate the way the furniture is set up in the bedroom. I, I have been like dealing with this setup for like so long and I can't stand it. And like, literally I start to go through my house and I'm going to get to the point right now. And I start to notice all the different shit that I've been putting up with, all the stuff I've been settling with, all the stuff that in some way, not literally, but in some way I have duct taped. So what I realize is ever since I was a little kid, right? So we grew up in Lawrence. Both my parents were like working class. My mother was an insurance agency. My stepfather was a wonder bread man. Um, you know, after my mother was killed, went to live with an aunt and uncle. My uncle was, they both worked that time, I think at Gillette, but my uncle was also a contractor and a builder. So it's always been like, whatever. But before we moved in with my aunt and uncle, you know, our life was pretty much like, we got what we got and you didn't complain about what you got. And you, as they would say back in the day, we made do, which means there are a lot of times in our life that we had things with holes in them. We had shoes with holes in them. We wore things that were hand-me-downs, like not even hand-me-downs from like other siblings. We would get hand-me-downs from other families of people who were just getting rid of clothes. So we would get like garbage bags of clothes that we would go through, right? And I, I know some of you, I know some of you are like double A men hands. You know what I'm talking about, right? So what happens at some point, I'm all for, let me be wicked clear. I'm all for reduce, reuse, recycle. I am all for um, like things that you use until they no longer work, right? Like I, I have a vacuum cleaner. I have an Oric vacuum cleaner, you guys, that I have had for over 20 years. I'll never replace it until that thing dies. I give it maintenance. I, I bring it to the service place. I've only had to bring it there like once, I think, the whole time I've had it. But I go and I get the replacer belts if it needs it. Because back in the day, shit was made to last. Nowadays, you, you, have, you have a friggin' gadget, it dies like within eight months, it's like ridiculous. But what I'm saying is a lot of my life, I had to quote unquote, make do. And if something had a hole in it, you would duct tape it sometimes, right? I spent, I can't even tell you, probably 18 months at BU. I had this pair of cowboy boots um, and I just loved them so much. And the soles had worn out and the soles had worn out so much on one of them that I had a hole in it. And I would wear them in the winter time. So I would basically do like a thing of duct tape and then I would do like a plastic bag over my sock. Like you guys don't even know. Like, and so I got really good in my life at adjusting to what was available to me. Um, of, of, and there was a situation, there have been so many situations when I was a little kid. And I, I'm kind of saving those stories for the book. I apologize. I don't mean to be a tease. But, you know, there's one story in particular where I really, really, really wanted something when I was a kid. And I didn't get it. And I was upset about it. And I was made to feel like I was, a, and I was not spoiled. We were not spoiled. <laughs> Fucking trust me. But I was meant to feel so selfish for having that particular want that particular desire. And when I look back at my life in a lot of ways, I realized that what I wanted didn't really matter. I'm talking about my younger years, okay? What my preferences were didn't really matter. It didn't matter what I felt. It didn't matter what I thought. It didn't matter what I wanted. Um, life was just coming at me. And some, sometimes it was life circumstances, your family, you know, people dying, having to move, like all, all the shit that could go wrong in a childhood. And, you know, a lot of us just get told, like, so I always say, suck it up and stuff it down. Like that was me, the queen of suck it up and stuff it down. Um, put your needs aside, put your wants aside, 
settle, take what you can get, duct tape it. So when I had this epiphany, right, like a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh, this isn't working for me anymore. And I'm an adult and I live in my own house. And you know what, motherfucker, what I want matters. Now, I'm not talking about being spoiled. And, and, and look at if you have the income and the means and the budget to get wicked nice things and that's what lights you up, I'm not judging it. Amen. Go for it. Have a good time. But, you know, material things, aren't, aren't certain material things, like I love books. Oh, my God. Books all day long. Um, but, you know, I'd rather spend my money on books than like clothes and shopping. You know what I mean? And that's not, again, not a judgment. That's just me. It's just how I'm wired. Um, so I just had this epiphany that I'm not doing this anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm in the store about to buy a mug. Not only that I don't need, but actually isn't going to fulfill my desire. I'm going to get it. And then it's just going to sit there. And I would put up with, like I, I thought, well, you could, you could get used to the peacock mug. But it's a three-finger mug. You could get used to it. And I'm like, no, we don't do that anymore. We don't duct tape ship. We don't, we don't put up with if we don't have to. I would rather wait and save my money for the thing I really want than get the cheapo version of the Fruityos at the store. I, I would say... <laughs> Makes you sound like I got to save, save my pennies for Fruit Loops. But you know what I'm talking about. I hope you're feeling me and hearing me. And here's the question I want to pose to you guys, okay? Where, like, where in your life are you putting up with? What in your life are you settling for? What are you duct taping and just crossing your fingers, hoping it doesn't fall apart? It could be a physical item. It could be your marriage. It could be your job. It could be your finances. It could be your health. What, what are you, like, take a good look around and ask yourself. Now, look at, let's be wicked clear. Um, I am a person who does not come from means, right? Like how I grew up. So I understand that there will be times in our life where it's like tough patooties. You can't have the thing that you want because as of right now, your bank account does not allow you to have that thing. But I do know sometimes with a simple shifting or sh yeah, a shifting um, of our priorities, you know, it'd be so interesting to me in the past when people would come to me and tell me that um, they were going to stop coming to yoga because they couldn't afford it anymore. And I'd be like, well, the class is like 10 bucks. This is back in the day, right? The class is like 10 bucks. And I know for a fact that you go out with your friends a few times a week eating out and you order wine and like your bill, like I would just sit there and I'm like, oh, what they're not recognizing, it's not that they can't afford yoga. It's just that going out and drinking is a higher priority or their Starbucks habit is a higher priority. It's not for me to decide whether that's good or bad, like whatever, it wasn't that. But one of the things you realize when you, when you own a business and you talk to people who wanna work with you and they tell you that they can't afford to work with you, sometimes, I'm not saying all the times, but sometimes if you really were to take a magnifying glass to their life, and this is, I always say to people, look at how you spend your money, look at how you spend your time and your money. Your calendar and your bank account will reflect to you what you really value, right? So it's one of those things. So there have been times in my life where I had to wait until I could earn, like save the money to get the, the, the version of the thing that I actually wanted. And there were so many years that I was doing the generic version of things. Who can feel me right now? You know what I'm saying? And sometimes like I'm 52, you know, I work hard. I work hard for the money that I earn. Um, I put my full self into the work that I do. And so I'm no longer really willing to settle. I want what, and I, it sounds so, like even saying it out loud, like I hear this critic at the back of my head go like, don't say that. You sound like a spoiled fucking asshole, right? It's like, I want what I want. And what I mean by that, not like I want what I want now. It's not that. It's not that whiny, whatever. It's I'm willing to work for it but I'm no longer willing to put up with shit in my own house that I'm like, why is this this way? So I have two more projects. You can see right behind me. Like I'll tilt my camera for those of you that are watching. So on the, 
the skylights on one side of my room, they're all framed out in wood on one side. On this side behind me, see how you can still see the drywall and the thing? That project, I have been putting up with it for two years. Because the guy who put in the skylight over here was gonna, said he was going to come back and do the work, and then he didn't. And again, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just telling the story, right? So every week, every day, I come in my office, and it, like, it doesn't really like 100% bother me, but it kind of bothers me. So I finally just said, that's it. I called the guy down the street, Paul, the mayor of my street. If you followed me around Christmas time on Facebook, you saw me, um, the guy with the amazing light display. Do you guys remember that video? <gasps> I call Paul the mayor of our street. I'm like, Paul, he's a retired builder. I'm like, Paul, can you come to my house? <laughs> I got these two projects, right? When I was on that tear of, I'm not putting up with this anymore. And I went around my house and I have these two projects and this is one of them. So he's gonna fix this in the next few weeks. He's going to trim this out for me. And I can't even tell you, I'm so proud of myself because I'm no longer willing to settle and I will bust my ass to do what I got to do to get what I want. Cause I don't have to wait on anybody else's permission. I don't have to feel the guilt and the shame of somebody else, right? Like a father figure, an adult figure, somebody in your life telling you that you shouldn't want what you want, that you should just settle. Oh, it's only got a little hole in it. Like, like look, I, I learned how to sew basics, some basics. I, I no longer know how to thread a bobbin on a sewing machine. I'm so sorry to my sewing teacher, my home ec teacher. <laughs> But I do know how to sew a button. I do know how to fix a hole. I do know how to kind of do a, a pretty good hem job, <clears throat> right? So I'm, I'm not just like spendthrift, like, oh, I want this and I'm going to just throw out. It's not that. I'm very mindful and conscious, right? I'm a vegan, but like we're aware of the environment, okay? So what I'm saying is I just wanted to share this story with you in case there's some area in your life where you've been putting up with something, when you've been settling right? Like you want the four finger mug, but you're like, ah, the three finger mug is a little bit cheaper, but it's got a cute thing. Like I want, I want for everybody who works with me and even those for, of you who, who listen to the podcast to be questioning everything, like to be asking ourselves, like, why do I do what I do? And why is that okay? And why am I settling for that? When I know in my hat of hats, what I truly want is this other thing. And you know what? It might take longer. And you know what? It might mean that I have to stop going to get coffee every day instead of just pouring it from home into a, in a mug. You know what? Maybe I can't, you know, uh, go out to, well, I mean, with COVID anyways, maybe I can't get takeout, okay? Like every week, whatever. Are we willing, and they call it sacrifice. I don't even think that of this as sacrificing. I think of this as prioritizing. Are we willing to shift our priorities to get the thing that we really want? And are we willing to let go of the people, places, projects, right? Bullshit things that are no longer serving us. That no longer, what does Marie Kondo says? Does it bring you joy? Well, if there's things in my world that I look at and I'm like, what the fuck? Why, why do I have this? right? Every house that has a junk drawer, like I always think about this, it, it's because here's the thing, it's driven by fear. We put up with things and hold on to things out of fear. And I have so much faith in my spiritual team. I have so much faith in the divine, in God. I know that what I need will, will come to me. Robert Drama Tagore says this, what is yours, what belongs to you, will come to you. If you create the capacity to receive it, and part of creating the capacity to receive it is knowing that you are loved and love, that you are lovable, that you are worthy, that you have value, that it's okay that you deserve that. I'm not talking, please do not confuse yourself about this whole law of attraction manifestation. I deserve the fancy house and the Porsche and the whatever, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about really just taking a look around. And if you're a four finger mug person, hold out for the four finger mug. And keep in mind, I know, like I said, as a kid coming up without a lot of money, I understand that there might be times when we have to use the thing that we currently have. 
right? Maybe you didn't have the fancy Sony uh, Walkman, right? Maybe you had the GE or what, I don't know, you had like the, whatever the generic versions of things were. But I think there comes a time when we hit a certain age when we can ask ourselves, and I understand, I am not, I, I recognize the economic disparity. I recognize, right, the culture, the cultures of, of racism and oppression and how, like, trust me, I, 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 I get it. I'm talking about personally in your heart and in your own home and in your own world. Are there things that you've been tolerating that you no longer need to do? Is there shit or relationships in your life that you've been duct taping, afraid that like, oh my God, I don't want to be alone. I'd rather do this than be alone. These things where we have fear, so we settle. So as a celebration of our 100th anniversary show, I just want to invite you guys into the knowing of um, knowing what you want and also knowing why you want it. And if you can reconcile that, if you can do the long math on that and you can see like, oh yeah, this is a genuine thing. This is, this is in my hat. This isn't about, I want to buy that or have that because it's like keeping up with the Joneses or they're going to think I'm cool or they'll take me more seriously if, right? We we're talking about this in the She Built This group today online about, you know, do people take you more seriously if, if, if they get a request for something with, from your assistant rather than from you? Like, does it... Do, do people take you more seriously because you have hired help or whatever, right? And I, I just think like, I'm going to save my thoughts and opinions on that for another day. But what I'm saying is this is an invitation for you to get really clear about um, what in your life, what, 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 is it, what is it time to let go of? What is it time to replace? What is it time to say? Yeah, we don't do that anymore. And what I don't do anymore is putting up with shit that doesn't really work for me. And that includes friendships, that includes business deals, that includes uh, like all kinds of stuff. You know, it's just like life is too fucking short, man. And I know too many people right now who are being diagnosed, who are dying, who are going through tough times. And, and you know, I was listening to this video, <clears throat> Ed, Ed, my, what's his name? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head, but this is a big famous business guy. And he was talking about the last time that he ever saw Kobe Bryant alive. And um, he was talking about how he goes, you know, I wonder what Kobe would have thought. He goes, so he saw him, I think, six days. His name is Ed, Ed something. It begins with an M, I think, or L, M or L. But he was talking about how um, he lost, saw, last saw Kobe at the gym, um, at a gym. It was there, both their daughters play volleyball together. And it was six days before he died. And He's like, you know, if Kobe had like gotten into his car and, and, it, and so, or went right before he left the gym, he heard a whisper in his ear, hey, Kobe, you're going to be dead in six days. And then the next day, hey, Kobe, you're going to be dead in five days. And there was more to the story, but he was kind of talking about how Kobe taught him how the value and the preciousness of time. And so one of the things I always say, like, you know, now that I've tipped, I've tipped into, you know, my 50s. I got, I got a few more than a few toes into my fifties. <laughs> and I always say, I know that I have less years ahead of me than I do behind me. Um, and so with the time I have, I just don't want to tolerate a lot of nonsense. I don't want to put up with shit that I don't want to put up with. And I also don't want to hoard, like my sweetie and I talk about moving all the time. And I'm like, you know, I, the, the thing that I have the most of right? We share one closet, one tiny closet, like all of our, all of our, like, you know, shoes and clothes are like, well, not all of our shoes. He has some boots in the basement, but most of our stuff is in there. Like we don't have a lot of fancy stuff like that. I do have a lot of books. That's probably the thing that I have the most of, but even that I, I look around and I'm like, Oh my God, I could, I could just get rid of like probably 50% of everything I have. So I'm slowly as I get older, cause we don't have kids. That's the other thing. We don't have kids to leave stuff to you guys, no children. So I'm like, who's going who's gonna to handle all this shit, <laughs> you know? So here's the thing. Get rid of the stuff you don't need. Get rid of the stuff you don't want. I'm not obviously saying just throw people out of, you know what I'm saying? Do it mindfully, know why you're doing it. But if there's something, if there's something that you've been putting up with or settling with, this is a really powerful time to be thinking about, you know, who am I? What do I want? How do I want to be in the world? How do I want to serve? And what's no longer serving me? And that's what I got for you guys today.
So um, thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. And for, um, you know, I'd love to know too, just because I'm wicked curious. So will you guys like <laughs> DM me or... <laughs> Let me know if you know what I'm talking about, about the four finger mug. Look, you might be a three finger mug person. That's okay. I, I mean, I, I don't want a three finger mug, but I get how you could be there. But until you know the joy of a four finger, I didn't even know until one day it was like, oh my God, this feels so much better on my hand. And now I will, I, I don't, I pick every, every time I go to pick something up, I like slide my hand through it. I go four finger mug. I can do that mug, right? But I cannot do it. I won't, I won't tolerate it, you guys. We don't do that anymore. We don't put up with having holes and shit, unless it's intentional. I have a lot of my jeans that I have on right now have big holes in them, but that's on purpose. <laughs> so you guys, I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you, um, Carol, my friend Carol. Uh, we've never met in person, but we know each other from online. She just went and left the nicest review. You guys who le leave reviews for me uh, on Apple Podcasts, like that is just like, I can't even tell you how much that means to me. And one of the reasons why it's so helpful is like when you guys leave reviews, not only does it help the show to be quote unquote in the way this world works, right? People see it and they go, oh, it's got good reviews. Maybe I'll listen. So your support helps me to also somehow end up in the hats and the homes and the, uh, the ears of other people. So I appreciate that. But then those, um, those reviews and stuff like that too. Um, so you can rate when you rate it, it's like when you like the stars, right? But when you review and you actually share your words, then I can use those on social media. And I can share your words with others who might invite more people into our Karen Kenny Show podcast family. So I just appreciate it on so many levels. And it's really not, I swear to God, like, don't get me wrong, of course, right? As long as I'm alive, I'll, I have an ego. So yeah, of course, it's nice to read your words. And what I love most about it is seeing what you take from it right? Some people leave reviews on certain like very particular episodes. Some people listen to a bunch and just overall give a thing, but I read every single one of them. My business is not so big. I mean, I have a lot of moving paths in my business, but it's not so big that it's not the personal touch. There's a lot of personal touch in my world and in my business. And so I read all of those suckers and I'm always so grateful. And I just saw a new one the other day. So just thank you so much. So if you listen to the show and you truly dig the show and you have a few minutes, I would really appreciate that. Just thank you so much. Um, also, what else did I want to tell you guys about? Yep, come on to the newsletter list. If you don't get my emails, that's always wicked fun too. Um, and if I have anything else coming up, no, the nest is, get on. If you miss, if you wanted to join the nest, but you missed this round, get on the waiting list. Just go to karenkenny.com slash nest. And the next time this sucker opens, the people on the waiting list get a little secret squirrel in, in, in Z, right? Before um, the public. So they don't have to wait another six months. So I'm just doing a little winky wink, a little winkity wink to you guys. <laughs> so I appreciate you so much. I love you. Thank you for being with me. If you're, if you're hearing the sound of my voice right now, thank you for listening to my 100th episode. I super duper appreciate you. Uh, I celebrate you guys. I see you. I feel you. And uh, I love you. And wherever you go, you know, I always end the show this way. And I say it, but I don't say it. I say it with meaning. I mean it every time I say it, that wherever you go, go may you leave the people, the place, the pets, the animals, the environment better than how you found it. I always say to people, you want them to have been glad that you were there. You want them to have been happy that you were there, right? Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Bye. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days and let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. -E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review. 
because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.